We got more cut content from Mr. Basis Viewpoint about Coat Season 3, Episode 5. Give it to me. Classroom of the Elite Season 3, Episode 5 is here. Finishing off Volume 9 with an episode that truly undersells the depths of Ayano Koji's galaxy brain plan yes. that will leave you speechless. I just never would have thought that he was intentionally sabotaging yet again. I thought we were beyond that. I truly thought we were beyond just like breaking down the class to like, you know, unite them again. But it was a different purpose. And it was very like the obvious answer was in front of me, yet I couldn't get it. That's the beauty of this show. It's too big brain for me. And honestly, in my opinion, also fails to deliver the message about guilt and self-acceptance. Yeah, because everybody just folk fixated on the fucking shoplifting bullshit that North Americans don't give a fuck about. That Kinugasa was trying to convey through Ichinose's character. I think it's just lost in translation due to the cultural difference. You cannot make people, you know, understand the story of guilt and acceptance and whatever redemption by having shoplifting be the core, you know, crime when it's like, it, it, it is such a trivial thing. It's like, it, it might as well be the same thing as downloading music for fucking free online or pirating anime to North Americans, you know? So I'm here talking about all the cut content for this episode, ranging from things such as Class A and D, straight up throwing hands with each mm. other. Yo, Albert was about to fight this dude, but no, no, why did I skip it? To going over just how insane and well thought out Ayano Koji's plan to save Ichinose was. Also, stay tuned till the end of the video for my review slash borderline rant for this episode. Okay, I'm of done. Of course, feel free to skip that section if you're here just for the cut content. No, I, I want the rant. Especially because I'm probably going to be quite harsh on the anime. Oh, this video is going to be fun. This last bit is going to be fucking great then. As a massive fan of the light novels. All right. With all that being said though, let's dive in. Let's go. So the episode starts by skipping the second half of the class drama scene where we see Hirata. Yeah, coming. because last time apparently Yamagod was not done cooking. I wanted more of Yamagod to just go off. To the class, trying to get Yamauchi to shut up and reassuring the class. We also see Sudo approaching Hori. So basically, Hirata just comes in and just like stops it, huh? Hirata just comes in and see, then Hirata just stops coming it. Hirata coming to the class, okay, okay. trying to get Yamauchi to shut up. It was that simple? Like he just, he just shut up like that after Hirata showed up? And reassuring the class. We also yeah. see Sudo approaching Horikita, asking if there's anything he can do to help the class. Nothing. Sit down and be a good dog. Displaying the stark contrast between him and Yamauchi who were both equally hated by the rest of the class at the beginning of first year. Yeah. Now Sudo is working. Sudo's made a lot of work. I mean, he's become kind of a husk or a shell of the man he once was. I mean, ah, he's developing for the better, right? It's just that he just feels like a fucking dog for Susan. And that's what he exactly is. Is that a good thing? I'm not sure, but there definitely is some development. Working hard towards making a good name for himself compared to Yamauchi. Who has not changed at- This is the point where he told Mi-chan to shut up, dude. I can't believe he told Mi-chan to shut up right now. Oh my god, what did she do? Who has not changed at all since That's the start up. of the school year. We also learned that other classes are also being targeted by the rumors as well. And Class A is the only one without any rumors. Gee, I wonder who spread the rumors. Gotta be Class A or at least that's what I thought was supposed to happen. But no, it's just that Class A just keeps their shit locked up tight because they're competent. Naturally leading everyone to suspect them. Moving on, we have yet... Kanzaki. More skipped Kanzaki scenes. Bro does not get any fucking dialogue in the anime. He did get a little bit last episode, but not enough. Another card scene where we see Horikita and Ayano Koji meet up with Kanzaki. And they talk about Ichinose and how she hasn't been coming to school, which is a really big deal in the LN. I thought, I don't know. I, 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 I really wanted to believe that the rice porridge was poisoned, <laughs> but I guess it wasn't. I thought that maybe Ichinose wasn't coming to school so because we really want to break her down with the fucking <laughs> rice porridge. But no, we had a different way of breaking her down. Because their final exams are about to start in just a few days. The three of them also get approached by Arisu along with Hashimoto and Kamuro. Double agent! We see Kanzaki trying to interrogate Classy about the rumors and another skip line from Kyu which really annoyed me. And what that is, is Ayano Koji saying that I wasn't particularly invested in the whole class conflict thing, but it didn't mean that I wasn't worried about Ichinose as a friend. Besides, more information wasn't a bad thing, not to mention the fact that Hashimoto had been telling me lately for some time now. 
If I made contact with class B, the shadow of class A would be inevitably loom closer. But that was exactly what I was hoping for. Huh. But he already knew that Hashimoto was like trailing. And I think that was kind of shown in a couple episodes ago where Kay and Anokoji were having like a scene of Valentine's chocolate. But Anokoji was trying to be like, hey, you notice this guy? He's, he's right there. You, you, you see him? He's stalking us right now. And he wanted, he was hoping for it, huh? He, if he made contact with class B, the shadow of class A would inevitably loom closer. Everything leads to one road. Even though he's not interested in the class conflict, he's worried about Ichinose as a friend. That's like, actually, friend? I think ally. Does he, like, I, I, I don't know. In the light novel, I guess he wants a lot of friends, right? He wants girlfriends too. But in the anime, it's just hard to believe this cold robot would even consider anyone a friend. But ally, I agree. Along with him alluding to his plan. Also, side note, but rip Kanzaki for getting literally every no single lines. one of his scenes skipped in the anime. Yo, in the light novel too right now, we're doing the um, pseudo versus classy conflict where, you know, Sakura arc, you know, boring, but Kanzaki was there. Kanzaki was actually there and getting lines, but it's like the anime, nope, skipped all that shit. Moving on, we have yet another skipped scene, which is a call between Ayano Koji and K about the rumors regarding them. Though it was mostly more Sundari K fluff content, okay. which is definitely nice, but... I, I enjoyed the Sundari fluff, you know, her getting all embarrassed and stuff like that. I can see why it didn't make it. And now we finally no! have a scene that did get adapted, which was the confrontation between Class A and D. Did they actually fight? Did they, did they fight in the lineup? Did they skip the fight here? But boy oh boy, do they cut out a lot from this scene. Fuck. Starting off. Their confrontation actually took place outside the school building in an isolated. I love how Albert immediately got his hands up. Dead place. Second thing was Hashimoto, fully prepared. Like, how is this guy a high school student? The guy on the left, I mean. What the fuck is this dude? Bro is not a high school student. Neither is Albert. For a fight because he brought Kito along with him. Kito. Next up, we learned about rumors that Nagumo is willing to let physical fights off the hook easily yeah which he's was fine something with that I talked about in the cut content for so i guess like physical fights are kind of okay like physical altercations nagamo is pretty like lenient with but like rumors are no longer allowed right like fake news gossip you know and any type of um defamatory statements toward other student students it's gonna be taken with uh with a lot of uh caution from the student uh, from the teachers right for episode three so feel free to check that out then we move on to look at this dude look at this dude i wonder who the one kito or albert i feel like kito would have won because he's like a new character just coming in right newer at least he, i know he was shown in the anime in season one we saw him actually in season one right in one of those rainy scenes where arisu is like having an umbrella held right i think kito was there but at the same time because he hasn't really gotten the spotlight and because albert already kind of has I feel like Kito could beat Albert. It's just like a power creep. It's like a new guy. Because look at him. Look at the weight that he's even fucking putting his gloves on. Bro can definitely fight. An actual brawl, which starts by Hashimoto going into Keiki Shizaki, which gets stopped by Akito, who is there to try and stop them. Apparently, Akito, the purple haired guy, he stopped the fight before too. Like, he's pretty competent in terms of like physical confrontations, which is like, huh, I would have never thought about that. From fighting. Eventually, Ibuki also starts throwing hands as well. Oh, what? Along with Ishi. <laughs> Ibuki start breakdancing fucking capoeira kicks. Izaki going 2v1 on Hashimoto. What? Also, Akito was such a. They skipped 2v1? They skipped a 2v1 against Hashimoto? I want to see the fights, please. But I guess. I mean, they're probably trying to save the budget, right? I mean, it would have been cool to see some fucking action again, but I mean, ugh, sucks that they skip shit like this. Badass in this scene. Though he does eventually get restrained by Albert. The fight eventually ends with Hiyori begging them to stop and Hashimoto saying that if Class C was the one who spread the rumors, they would not have left their class alone in order to not make them the prime suspects. Pretty much, they're like, you fucking idiots. You think that we would be so incompetent to the point that we wouldn't even put ourselves in as one of the fake rumors to cover our ass? Like, come on, you amateurs. And honestly... <laughs> that is ruthless, but it's true though. It's absolutely true. And that's why I thought that Hondo 
<laughs> was a true mastermind behind all of this because you know maybe the Honda put himself down and saying you know I you know, Honda only dates fat bitches but it's like it, because he said that suddenly he is not suspicious you know what I mean because he was the target but that wasn't the case Rewin really just being absent Rewin has where is he, where is he? Bro just fucking had minimal scenes in the beginning of the season in the mountain arc. He didn't even really have any dialogues either. It's just little cut frames looking him all emo, right? There was a night scene where, he, where you know, Nagumo was present. But still, Ryuan is just gone. And it kind of feels like Hiyori is the new leader. You know what I mean? Feels like he, it feels like Ryuan truly is just retired. He's kind of on the bench and he's like, all right, fuck it. Hiyori, get in there. Just fucking lead them. I don't know, man. Ryuan's still recovering. He'll be back. I don't know when. I'd like to him for him to come back. Fuck. It's crazy how much I wanted him. I wanted his ass to get beat up in season two. But now after that, it's just like, shit. I want our once uh, class 1C leader to just come back once more and rule them with violence. Also an interesting fact is that as they're leaving, Ishizaki says to Hiyori, why did she ask them to come with her if she was going to stop them anyways? Which surprises Hashimoto hmm. because he never expected Hiyori to be the one who initiated this conflict. Later. Especially because none of the rumors were about her as well. Also another thing to note about this scene was Kiyo getting a look at Ibuki's student ID which falls to the ground during their fight what? and something about the ID manages to catch his attention. Whoa, 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 is this huge? Ibuki's ID falls down. Something about the ID is sus. Identity fraud? What do you mean? Wait, wait, what about Ibuki's card? He also ends up asking Manabu about it during a call what? to him later. He asked Manabu about Ibuki's card? On. During the call, Manabu also lets Ayano Koji know that the first year might have another special exam, which wasn't the case that, that, for- that's not, that's not the question I'm asking! Where's my answer about Ibuki's card? Okay, um... Well, if that's just a huge plot point, why would the anime skip it? Unless it's not that important. I don't know. To me, this sounds like this is fucking important, but maybe it's not in the grand scheme of things. For previous years. Now we move on to Ichinosi finally coming to class and Arisu confronting her. Surprisingly enough, this scene was mostly the same as the LN, aside from it being way less dramatic and a few small cuts here and there. Which was also the case with Ichinose's backstory up until Arisu and I Yo, Ichinose's mom though. Look, look, look at this little wink that she does as she tilts her hip. Look at this. With Ichinose's backstory. Oh, what the fuck, mom? Mom, you did not have to fucking twist your hip like that. But I see you. I see you, mama Ichinose. Up until Arisu and Ayano Koji's bad. Though one major difference is that Arisu and Ichinose's entire confrontation was being narrated by Kyo. And he huh. also says that Arisu's plan will fail because he broke Ichinose before Arisu could. Yeah, and I guess at that point of the game, Anokoji didn't know that about Arisu's other intentions, right? Because at, even at this point, like the fact that he Anokoji broke her down is because you know Ichinose is kind of like a friend, so you know you you fucking break her down to the fucking ground. You rebuild her back up so that she's relieved of all these guilty conscience so that she can go up and have the speech and class B will be back. So all of Arisu's efforts will be gone. But it turns out that was Arisu's plan the entire time. It was never about crushing Ichinose. It was just to get Anokoji's attention. So Anokoji didn't know at this point, right? That about Arisu's intentions. Did Anokoji actually think that he was doing this to kind of get one over Arisu? But technically Arisu came out on top because at the end of the day... Ichinose was never the target. So that's kind of... That's a little bit of a Koji L and an Arisu dub right there, right? I, I feel like, obviously, the, the war isn't won, but that little skirmish of little mind games. I, I guess Arisu kind of came out on top. Is that fair? I mean, Arisu, it's not... I don't know, but she, she, she basically did have us guessing the entire time, and Koji didn't know at this point. The next change scene is rearranging Ayano Koji going over to Ichinose, which happened at the end of the volume in the LN. In the LN, instead of Ichinose flashback, we actually get a Kushida, Kushida flashback, flashback. What? which shows the first time Kiyo made the deal with her. We see Kushida coming over to Kiyo's room late at night. Oh my god. This is also where Kushida hands over chocolates to Ayano Koji. 
it was a 1v1 chocolate delivery in the light novel. I guess a little, it was a little bit more deliberate because like in the anime, all we saw was like five different chocolate packages and Kushida's name was one of them. And at that point, I should have fucking known that Kushida was involved, but I just couldn't. I, I thought that this bitch was fucking scheming somewhere else. I just never considered her to be able to help us at this moment. Their conversation mostly revolves around Kyo trying to convince Kushida into giving him information and reassuring her that none of the rumors will be traced back to her. Kiyo also calls out Kushida recording their conversation through her phone because he noticed Kushida being really careful with her words and not showing her others. The smartphone meta, everything's being recorded, careful. Side with this freaking cool illustration. Whoa! With Koji had like a cool scene. Was there an equivalent of this in the anime? I guess not because they cut this part out. Which sadly did not make it into the anime. Yeah. Also, Kyo intentionally leaves out blind spots in his plan in order to make Kushida think that he's not perfect and can make mistakes as hmm, well. Intentionally. And it was actually Kyo who made the deal about giving Kushida half of his points until graduation. Doesn't matter if we get that bitch expelled next episode though, right? Now, why do we actually have to meet this deal? What is preventing us from saying, no, nah, fuck you, I don't want to do that anymore? It's just all written verbal agreements that can't really be enforced. Now, I'm sure Kushida can start some shit, right? If she, if we say no about the 50% of the points, but I'm sure Aona Koji will honor his side of the deal until we have an opportunity to get rid of Kushida. But at this rate that we're going on, and Aona Koji is now declared twice, not once, but twice, that he will get her expelled, right? Once in season two finale, and once in season three, this episode. Is it actually going to happen? Or is Kushida going to stick around much longer? Writing? Recording proof? Yeah, true. Maybe the recording could be in the, the smartphone so you could, you know, prove this to the student council and say, hey, we were doing this secret thing and this motherfucker owes me 50% of the points. He doesn't give it to me anymore. I guess they could kind of enforce that, yeah? The anime made it seem like Kushida cares about money for some reason. Yeah. I don't think she does, though. She never really cared about private... Po it's all about her personal fucking, you know, grudge against Susan about the backstory, at least in the past. And now, whatever... The, the, I'm sure she still holds a grudge. While in the LN, Kushida is one of the richest people in the class. Really? Because of how many points she managed to get from the... Donations? Are people simping? Cruise ship special exam. Okay. So she basically just got rich off the cruise special exam while working with Ryun and stuff. Naturally, Kushida thinks this is a lot of points just for some information, to which Kiyo answers that it's a reassurance and says no matter how many points Kushida has, it's still gonna be useful later on, considering you can use points to save yourself yeah. even from expulsion. Could you, like, I am... Okay, let me cook, let me cook. I think that because we just had an instance of a character that was I never thought was gonna help us out, was useful, and the fact that she has a lot of points right now, and we've already seen the mechanic of buying back students once expelled. You think there's a chance that Koji gets expelled, but then Kushida saves him for whatever reason? I'm not really sure. And at the end of the day, the duel against Arisu is not about expulsion. It's about exposure of his past. So I guess that's not really a... A good point, but I'm just thinking like if this girl has so many points and if it's she, and the anime is the anime keeps making me think that she's evil and that she can't help us yet she kind of does prove to to prove to be useful it would be kind of interesting if there's a scene where she actually like saves one of us but it's like what the fuck Kushida of all people did it and tells Kushida to stop trying to expel him naturally Kyo doesn't intend to get exploited by her and the only reason he did all this was to see just how much information Kushida has mm. and to make a plan in order to expel her. Also, Kiyo says that Kushida can make a contract or something if she doesn't trust him. To which Kushida pulls out a second recorder, which re <laughs> She had a second phone! She came with two fucking smartphones! Recorded their entire conversation. And now- I thought the smartphone meta was fully developed and I could not be tricked anymore. This bitch comes out with a second fucking phone. Bro, the layers. The la Why not a third phone? You never know anymore. You just can't ever just be, you know, you gotta always be cautious like that. Holy fuck.
<laughs> Krishna was so cautious. She, yeah, she probably thought that she was so smart there when she pulled out her fucking second iPhone. <laughs> That's actually kind of funny. Now we finally start seeing Ayano Koji's insane plan, which started as early as the Valentine's Day. Starting off, Kyo knew that he was being stalked by Hashimoto yeah. every single day and said that if he wanted to do anything, he'll have to get Hashimoto's eyes off him first and he plans to use K in order to do that. During the night before Valentine's, Kyo knew that K was gonna give him chocolates, so he purposefully mm. turned off his phone so K wouldn't be able to meet with yeah, him. Yeah, I, I, I guess it makes sense. Like, uh, people are like, people are like, KK, who could this be? It's a like Karui Zawa K, probably makes the most sense, but other people are like, no, Kikyo Kushida, it's like, come on, bro, Cap. So he purposefully turned off his phone so K wouldn't be able to meet with him early in the morning and she would have to meet with him around the time Hashimoto stalks him. Okay. Also, the entire talk about Ayano Koji being a middleman to deliver the chocolates was also a part of Ayano Koji's plan, making Hashimoto think that they are trying to hide their secret relationship, which made Hashimoto think that he learned about one of Ayano Koji's secrets no, you and didn't. He decided to stop stalking him for now. Oh. And now that oh, I thought the whole thing was dispersed by um Ayano Koji just leaving K. You know? But Hashimoto was out of the picture, Kyo could finally start making his moves. First up, he met up with Hiyori, Hiyori at the oh? library, which was also a Hiyori skin skipped. part of his plan. He would eventually hint to Hiyori that Classy might start targeting other classes as well. Then he intentionally left out Classy and chose Ibuki and Ishizaki when deciding to spread the rumors. Because he expected both of them to come. They spread? The rumors? Front class A, since they get triggered so easily. <laughs> True. Up, he chose I, I, oh, I, I, I guess in the in the anime we just saw this scene, right, of the vice prince, the vice president, right. So I thought that Anokoji's had the rumor spread through him, but technically, class one D right now through Ibuki, Albert, and Ishizaki, they also help spread the rumor. Am I understanding it correctly? Koji spread rumors about them to get to antagonize class A. I thought, okay, it's, it's like a totally separate set of rumors because this set of rumors right now has to deal with our class while Ishizaki and them, those rumors were for class A specifically. It's two, two separate different things. Kiriyama to post the rumors with his phone. Kiriyama had his doubts about this plan because if it gets traced to his phone, the student council might lose its credibility. To which Kyo replies, isn't that a good thing since Kiriyama Losing credibility is a good thing. I wanted Nagumo's downfall. Oh, true, 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 true. I guess this ultimately, Kiriyama is not really the one getting all the punishment. It's, it's Nagumo. Kiriyama said that if they did find out, he'd be the one who gets punished and might have to leave the student. Uh, never mind. Well. And Kiyo gives him a solution by saying that Koshida made contact with Nagumo and he can use that to spread a false narrative that Nagumo was the one who got the rumors from Koshida and he wanted to use those rumors in order to save Ichinose, who is a part of his student council. True, his plaything. So I guess this is a way to make it all fall on Nagumo and Kiriyama. And now we finally have Kyo going over to meet with Ichinose in the LN. Around a week before the exam, Kyo goes to meet with Ichinose, though Ichinose hasn't been letting anyone into her room, so he Except doesn't manage Koji. to get in. But he sits outside her room in front of the door in order to talk to her. Bro was just sitting outside for like two weeks out in the rain until each knows he would let him in. And he comes back and sits there every single day. Every day? day bro was just sitting in front of the door? How romantic. Break, trying to get her to talk. Two days before the exam, Ichinose finally responds by asking him, why doesn't he say anything to her? Why doesn't he? He's just waiting for you to confess your sins. Come on, confess. Confess. Ask her to come to school or asking her what's wrong with her. To make you and feel Kyo guilty. Replies, it's because his ability to. Well, that's because those other students are really, really worried about you, Ichinose. Their attempts to convince you again and again. That's something I could never do. My ability to connect with other people is so limited that if I try to use my emotions to appeal to your emotions, I can't imagine it would really resonate because you don't have emotions, Ayana Koji. Well, that's not true. In the light novel, it does seem like he does. But interesting. Interesting. I mean, even if he says that his ability to connect with other people is so limited, 
and that other people are worried. I feel like even though his social game is kind of lacking, which is improving still, it is still insane how there's seemingly zero communication skill, no social game guy is able to manipulate the key players that do have those skills and are able to just kind of puppeteer them and get them to do what he originally wanted them to do without even them understanding who the fuck is controlling them. To connect with others is limited. And if you try to appeal to those emotions, it just wouldn't work with Ichinose. He then says, He's waiting for Ichinose to unload Confess. everything herself. Confess. The fact that he knows about her crime. In the <laughs> yeah, end, her crime. it wasn't as dramatic as Kyo being silent the entire time, then saying a few words, then Ichinose having a mental breakdown like the anime portrayed. It was much more realistic and felt somewhat genuine. Oh? He Maybe this is what Mr. Baseless Yu Pen is upset about. Ichinose's um, breakdown in the anime was very superficial compared Even to it. Says to Ichinose, that he doesn't know the full details and he'll stop asking Ichinose if she doesn't want to talk about it. And we get one of my favorite moments of the entire series. Your favorite moment, Mr. Baseless Yu Pen, is Ichinose breaking down, tears falling down her face. You freak! I'm just kidding. Even though Ichinose can save other- You're probably not very good at opening up to the other people about your own troubles, Ichinose. Even though you can save others, you can't save yourself. That's the kind of person you are. That's why I'm here now. Even if you can save others, you can't save yourself. Damn. And Anakoji is here to save her, baby. She doesn't have the power to save herself. That's the kind of person she is. And that's why I am here. Seeing Ichinose like this, Kyo is reminded of other students from the hmm. White Room. Seeing Whoa! There was a brief silence. It was hard. Wanting to let your emotions out, but having no one you could let them out to. I'd seen countless children suffer through the same thing back in the white room. Wait, am I allowed to read this? This is light novel cut content though, right? I'm not to read, I'm, I'm not to read this, right? Can I read this? I'm gonna read it. Eventually, they broke down and disappeared. Became broken people with no hope of ever recovering. So there's a couple scenes in the white room in like season one where Adokoji is like the only one like left standing and there's like a girl that like falls down and starts like fucking like grasping for air like she's choking. I thought they were straight up dying. He, he was the only one that was left at the end. So are kids allowed to just voluntarily come and go as they please? I, I thought that they were all just stuck in this fucking lab and they're just forced to do this shit and they might be like executed if they don't like compete and like win or some shit. That they wanted to let their emotions out. Huh. He never had anyone that he could let the emotions out to, huh? Because it was just competition at the end of the day. That was the kind of environment that the white room was. No room for friendships. Everyone's just a tool. Just use everyone. Just get ahead. But they had no outlet, which left them broken beyond repair. And then drops one of the best lines in the series, telling her that he's her door right now. Oh? And no one will make fun of her. Then. Damn, this is an important line. I'm your door right now. I can't see your face and I can't reach out and touch you. I'm just a door. No one will laugh at you if you reveal your weakness to a door. Pretty deep and profound. Finally asking her about- You know what? This is a way more sentimental in the light novel compared to the anime. These aren't even like, like long scenes either. You, you could have just like said these lines, you know, instead of each say just fucking breaking down in the kitchen while Aruko just sipping his tea in the table. She wants to do ending in a wholesome exchange between the oh. two before she finally tells Ayano Koji about her past while softly crying. Even someone so pathetic like me, can I really? Who has the right to deny you that, I asked. Can a criminal like me? <laughs> yes, yes, shoplifter, remember, ever really be forgiven. Everyone has the right to be forgiven. Ishino said the entire time just had that guilt conscious that was just buried and just kind of like ate at her, right? So this is huge to just kind of give her the closure and to kind of move forward. Giving Ayano Koji Valentine's chocolates. Oh yeah. Which is more deserved in the light novel compared to the anime. Though in the LN, they both also get approached by Nagumo. What? Ichino says that she knows Nagumo was the one who told Arisu about her past. But she doesn't hear- Honestly, before we continue with this part, I memed around last episode about how he did all this shit. He like, you know, I, I joke about how he made Susan a fucking get sick and get a fever so we could get that exceptional rule case to switch the leader out in season one special exam, right? To win. 
That's fucking fucked up. We then intentionally let Kay get bullied and let her get waterboarded to manipulate her into thinking that we are trustable and that she should rely on us. That's fucked up. And now in season three, I was telling you guys like how he broke down each note so they just completely collapses her and then still gets the Valentine's chocolate at the end. But honestly, it's not even that bad. It's not bad at all. Because the way the light novel is portraying this whole scene is he is there as like actual emotional support. Just straight up saying, I know you don't want to show your weakness. I'm just a door. You can let it out. Everybody has the right to be forgiven. This is so much better. Makes him so much more human. But in the anime, it just felt like bro made her fucking collapse and cry for the better of her. And at the end of the day, it does work. But, you know, the anime just makes him seem like a fucking insane person. But the light novel... It makes him so much more human. So much empathy here. And I definitely agree with Mr. Baseless Yupan. I, uh, if I knew that this scene was adapted like that, were you guys upset as light novel readers? I would kind of be upset. ...crying. And the volume ends with Ichinose giving Ayano Koji Valentine's chocolates, which feels way more deserved in the light novel compared to the anime. Though in the LN, they both also get approached by Nagumo. Ichinose says that she knows Nagumo was the one who told Arisu about her past, mm. but she doesn't hate him for it because it allowed Nagumo her to snitched. grow as a person. Nagumo, on the other hand, doesn't look too pleased because Kyo thinks Nagumo wanted Ichinose to break. How did Nagumo know about Ichinose's past? Huh? I, I, how, did, how, did, how, did, how did how did Nagumo how did Nagumo know that? I mean, he does have a huge information network, but okay. So he could be the one to build. Her to grow as a person. Nagumo, on the other hand, doesn't look too pleased. It's a spoiler. If I want to, I'm not going to read anything. Because Kyo thinks Nagumo wanted Ichinose to break so he could be the one to build her back up again as a pawn. Please. We did break her down. But did Nagumo also want to break her down? To, she, she, she is her, sorry, she is his plaything. So technically, we are getting in the way of Nagumo. We're kind of pissing him off. We are, he already was kind of suspicious of us, but now that we kind of took away his plaything, uh-oh. Glaring at Ayano Koji and being more suspicious of him. And with that, uh -oh, we've uh -oh. finally covered all the cut content for this episode. And now, the, the next part of the video is going the to rant? be my review slash borderline friend. Here we go. So feel free to skip it if you No, no, this is the best part. Dead. This is the best part. This Come on. was my least favorite episode of this entire season. <laughs> I know lots of anime movies and even a decent amount of light novel readers yeah. found this episode to be pretty decent. I wonder why he's upset. Maybe it's the delivery of, you know, the end scene with Ichinose and how Anokoji didn't really... Like, he didn't say the door line, you know, he, he, he just kind of sat there. But personally, I felt like this episode missed the mark during some really great moments. First up, they never even show Nagumo telling Arisu about Ichinose's yeah. past. People are just left to wonder where the hell did Arisu get all this info? I just, just, I don't know. She's a queen. She's got an information network. But okay, that's kind of important that Nagumo's the one that told her. From Plus, it's really important for Nagumo's character moving forward because he's the one who gave Arisu permission to break Ichinose so he could turn her into one of his pawns. Psych, but we took that. his entire plan to deal with Nagumo, get info on Koshida, ban rumors and save Ichinose all at once was completely glossed over. Now, do you think that uh, Anakoji did this intentionally knowing that Nagumo was doing his things with Ichinose to break her down to make her into his pawn? Do you think that Anakoji understood what Nagumo was trying to do and then interfered on top of that? Or do you think that this is all just coincidental? I'm not too sure honestly and knowing this character Anakoji I would just assume that Nagumo is aware and Anakoji intentionally did that to kind of fuck him. but doing that you would think that not Anakoji would figure out a different way to do it to not really get Nagumo's target you know because now we have a fucking target on our back along with this contract with Kushida this was all basically the highlight of this volume and the lack of Anakoji's monologues really hurt the anime as usual and the final thing that really pissed me off was the anime making everything way more dramatic. The entire point of Ichinose's backstory was the fact that 
it's mm. not a big deal compared to the anime making it seem like she had committed a murder or something it really did feel like that because it's like she's a fucking criminal what crime shoplifting the whole point was that shoplifting wasn't a big deal and it's less about the shoplifting and more about the culture that surrounds japan about shoplifting about you know it, it it's it's very trivial here but in, in japan it's a cultural difference it's like a big deal it's about honor it's about other shit like that and i totally get it. it's about the guilt that you know kind of carries over and and how you how you feel like you're trapped by it and finally each knows being able to kind of let go of all that i i understand it's just just kind of feel like they picked the wrong topic to focus on is the criminal portion which was the shoplifting which was for the fucking birthday gift for his sister, it's like, bro, no, ain't nobody got taking 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 that seriously. Arisu was preying on Ichinose's nature as a genuinely good person, as Kyo himself says. There was no crime committed. Ichinose's mother took the proper measures to return the stolen item and apologize to the store. Yeah, we even did that. Ichinose did make a mistake, but she did not commit a crime. She was being held on by the guilt of a crime. Yeah, it's the guilt that, that was she burdened. Did not even commit. And the way they handled Kyo and Ichinose's conversation just really annoyed me. Yeah, based on what he said about all these different genuine lines that Ayana Koji was saying, like, how about he's a door and that, like, you can break down in front of a door and no one will care. And, like, well, I probably just paraphrased that in the wrong way. But you know what I mean. Like, there was a lot of good moments that was skipped out that could have really developed the scene into something more in the anime. But, yeah, that was my rant going over why this episode annoyed me. Bro, that's not even a rant. That's actually great points that you're making. That No, nah, not even. Me. If you're an anime only, please don't feel like I'm shaming you guys for liking it. No. In fact, I'm genuinely happy that some of you guys can enjoy the story despite it being so rushed. At the end And that's the beautiful thing about ignorance is bliss. If you never knew what was missing, then you might be able to just enjoy the thing that you're given fully not aware of what you're missing. But thank God I get to have people like Mr. Basis you can explain to me the things that I am missing because I like to be aware. The day, these are just my grievances as a passionate fan of the light novel. So don't take it too seriously. Exactly. This isn't hate towards the series. And again, guys, give Mr. Basil's Yupin a, a, a sub. Like his videos if you did. But again, it, it all comes from a place of passion and loving this show that we all love. I think that his criticisms about Aonokoji's, you know, lines during these um, Ichinose crying, it's absolutely justified. I think the anime should have definitely included some lines. It wouldn't even been that difficult. It's literally just like a 30 second fucking monologue. Like, why not? Why couldn't you have just said instead of Anako just sitting here, it's just saying, repent, shame, shame. Come on, guilt, guilt. But it is what it is. One of the things that I do really kind of regret is the fight between Kito and Albert not being shown if that ever happened. Yamagod fucking popping off round two. That wasn't really shown. And even, I guess, a little bit of like Nagumo telling Arisu other little things that we didn't see behind the scenes but again another great video from mr basis you've been informing us about the great content that was missed out in the anime